Peepers. So glad to have you. And is this your first time to watch the program? If it is, I just want you to know you're so welcome. I hope you will return many, many times. And of course, hugs and kisses out to those regular viewers. And you know what I'd like to say? Uh, we have been on in Denver, Colorado for just a, actually a very few weeks, really a few days. And I want to hear from you. I'm a Colorado one. So please watch for the information that comes up on the screen and either email us or write to us. I just want to hear from another person out there that's watching us from my wonderful home state. It's going to be a good program, maybe because my guest is also a Colorado one. Her name is Donna Hetzler, and she's an author and a conference speaker. And we're going to talk about her book, Walls of a Warrior. And I love this. I love this woman standing there with her back turned. Looks like we did it. Anyway, uh, the book is uh, such a, a good tool for any Christian because it kind of makes you uh, look inward and understand what's going on and if it's a negative thing that Jesus can really work on that I highly recommend it and you will understand why after you meet her and um, Martha Brangenberg is back she's the one from uh, Karis Christian Books and Gifts in uh, Largo Florida and the reason she comes on every month well she's real cute that's one thing but also, I'm amazed at how each month she can bring on such fresh ideas and fresh things. And I hope that during this season, for any gifts you are buying, try your family uh, Christian bookstore because they have a lot of things in there besides books. And you'll see that. I'll join her in a minute. But before I do, I want to offer you this book by a guest I had here recently, April Shenandoah. Your tongue determines your destiny, and that's, there's a whole lot of truth in that statement. I really think every Christian ought to read this or some kind of a book that deals with the tongue because it trips us up, doesn't it? And the Bible is full of admonitions to us as to how to control the tongue, how it should be used, and how it can be a blessing or it can be a cursing. So uh, this book, we are, we'll send it to you for that gift of at least $14.95. That includes shipping and handling and all that. <clears throat> and uh, I think most of you really do like to use a credit card or debit card. If you do, that's 1-800-229-0059. Or that address is on your screen as well, Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. And we will get it out to you. I think it's a book that will help your Christian life. That's what we're here for. And now I've joined Martha over here. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if we can, uh, can they read your t-shirt? Merry Christmas. Yes. <laughs> With bling. Lots of bling. Lots That's of bling. exactly right. And you have those in I your do. store. I do. I have them in my store. I really, I was really excited to find something that was fashion and also said specifically Merry Christmas. Doesn't say Happy Holidays. Happy, no Happy Holidays yeah. will be found at Karis yeah. ever. So I can guarantee that. <laughs> well, girl, you really do blow my mind about it. Each month you bring in things that are just so meaningful and yet things you can put about around your home and books and things yeah. that can well, strengthen you. I love Christmas, and mm. anybody who knows me will attest that as of January 25th, I'm already saying 11 more months oh. till Christmas <laughs> and on Facebook and things uh. like that. So um, this is it. This is mm -hmm. the season that um, it's the purpose behind why we have a Christian Books and Gifts store. Um, Jesus is his, his coming um, gave us salvation. So I'm I just love it, and everything that we have helps to share that. Oh story. yes, and <clears throat> you should see her store. But if you're not in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, look for the store. Just Google yes. it and find uh, because now this, if I move this, yep, will everything fall? you can take fall? it. Nope, you can take it. I am most drawn to this because I remember when my grandchildren were young, they had something like this that 25 days till Santa comes and, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's fine. But this will educate the children and the young people on the real reason for the season. It does. And I am a huge advocate of Advent mm -hmm. and Advent st stands for the coming mm -hmm. and, you know, so helping kids to prepare for the real reason of Christmas, which is Jesus's birth that mm -hmm. we celebrate. And so this is a little um, calendar that every day you open up the pocket 
um, getting closer to Christmas and there's a little piece of candy, a little piece of chocolate and then also a scripture verse. So just a really neat way mm. to draw it back to the scriptures, you know, that that's what it's really all about. And what a wonderful just a tradition to mm -hmm. begin and mm -hmm. uh, really begin to educate the children. So what's this called? Um, chocolate, chocolate Advent, Advent Calendar. calendar. <laughs> so, <laughs> Real creative, right? Like I say, if you don't live around here, you could Google that, but yeah. that's a wonderful yeah. teaching tool and candy's not bad either. No. So. And along with the Advent thing, um, there are a lot of devotionals mm -hmm. that can be purchased. This one's by Max Licato. Isn't that and it's, it's a beautiful book. And then there's candles that you light every Sunday leading mm -hmm. up to Christmas as a part of, again, just getting the family around the table, getting the family around the scriptures and talking about why we have Christmas and really pointing them towards and that. And it's more important now than ever before because of <clears throat> the world, the media, yeah. trying to take Christmas out of Christmas. Yeah. Well, and that okay. brings me to my next thing. Um, Saving Christmas has been in the theaters, Kirk Cameron's movie. And mm -hmm. it's all, again, it's about educating people on the real meaning mm -hmm. for Christmas. And so this is just a reminder of that. This is just a soundtrack. And he has, a whole, there's a line of t-shirts that he's really promoted. Ooh, I like that one. And this is a little thermal. You there's, feel it. It's very comfy. They have flannel jammies, all kinds of things. Uh -huh. But again, just that whole emphasis on Christmas. Everybody needs this to wear them on Christmas there Eve. There you go. I think that's a great idea. Something I'm really excited about this year is a lot of um, giveaway type books that you can mm -hmm. put in greeting cards for people that you want to really minister to. Sorry. Is this Lee Strobel? This is, mm -hmm. yes. The Case for Christmas. Um, this is the message of Christmas, which is written. It's the me message translation. So very simple, modern mm -hmm. um, paraphrase to tell the story of Christmas. And then Billy Graham's The Cradle, Cross, and Crown. So just a lot of ways to get the scripture into and people's hands. And you got food. Hands. I do, I have wassail, which if you've never put wassail on your stove, it makes your just whole house. Just yeah. You just mix that in with some apple juice and uh, you have the best smelling home. And I love that big mug. There's great mugs. Mugs are a big gift because it's not, you know, it's something that you can give you're with a message. And you're gonna, they're gonna use it, put it on their desk. Um, there's a um, platters, a lot of home good type things and ornaments that all share the message of Christ. And if you don't have a big place for a nativity, that one, yeah, it it's looks so, so sweet. It's just, it's it miniature. It's so detailed, it's it, so tiny. It is, and I don't know if you noticed, but I put the wise men back here because uh -huh. you know they didn't arrive at the That's birth. Right. <laughs> so I'm kind of particular about that. The so they're still on their way. <laughs> and oh, and there's here's a, a snow, snow globe. Uh -huh. Savior has been born to you, it's Christ the Lord. Yep. Yep, so I love these. I know, They're very that relaxing just to and watch the, them. And the item next to it, I don't have it turned on, but it actually, that cross actually has a little um, light on it in LED. So, oh, and that, that's the bigger book of the, the case, case for Christmas. For Christ yeah. uh, Lee Strobel was a, a devout atheist. Yes, he was. And so uh, when he uh, came to the Lord through, through all of his skepticism, uh, he's written some wonderful books, really. Yes. Um, apologetic type yes. books. Yes. Okay, what's this one? Some kids books. Um, so this one is about counting your blessings at Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, there's one down front that's a star. A lot um, of these things too, Jesus. you're gonna keep forever. That's right, I love oh. this because if you have any boys especially that like the Lego um, playing mm -hmm. toys, this is a nativity scene by Trinity Toys. And so again, it's giving them a nativity that they can really engage mm -hmm. with and have a lot of fun. And it's not just for boys, but boys are hard to find gifts for. Yep, and a lot and of creativity going on here. Yes, um, this is a really great 12 stories of Christmas. Um, just some good stories that give meaning and they're true about somebody mm -hmm. and their experience and how it brought them maybe closer mm -hmm. to the Lord at Christmas time. And, and of course cards, cards, greeting cards is yes, a great way to get scripture into people's hands. Sometimes it's hard to find Christmas cards with any meaning in yeah. the stores there too. Yeah. All and right, everything we got time for one have. more. All right, well, how about this? Oh. These are pins and these are just all different. Keep Christ in Christmas. Jesus is the best the gift of all. Yeah. You can wear that on your jacket or your, you know, whatever you're wearing, scarf. Um, to again bring the emphasis back to these are these are Christmas, Christmas. cards too. They are beautiful. They are. beautiful. And how about this? Oh yeah, this, this is one. a sucker. Happy birthday, Jesus! Every kid would love that in their stocking, yes, I think. Yes. So it's a just a fun, very sugary mm -hmm. way to remind them that it's Jesus's birthday. Well, girl, you've done it again. <laughs> I, I want to mention that uh, her husband and, and you accompany him on a wonderful radio show mm -hmm. uh, in the Tampa Bay area, and that's. Uh, AM 1110 and the show is 
God, I, the, I work for him. I work for him. That's correct. Put God in the workplace. Yep. But, you're, you're the right idea. Yeah. But the name yeah. of the show is yeah. I work for him. All right. Thank you. I hope we have stimulated your interest and you'll uh, get some really meaningful gifts and give some too. Stay with me. I want you to meet my new best friend, Donna Hetzler. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I introduced to you Donna Hetzler from Elizabeth, Colorado. And so we have an immediate kinship there. She's uh, married to David and author, Bible teacher, uh, speak at women's retreats, and you're a real estate broker. Yes, you're I wear many girl. hats. <laughs> you're a busy girl. Um, now, the book basically is talking about walls in your own life that uh, the Lord would like to knock them down like Jericho. It's, a, it's just a, a great mental picture. And uh, I, th I think if people read a book like this, they'll discover some they didn't even know they had, which is interesting. Now, how, what put you in that direction to end up writing this book? Did you have a lot of walls? No, I didn't have any walls, <laughs> Arthelene. <laughs> you have to tell the truth on this book. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Actually, it started with a conversation with two women that I had been doing a Bible study with for over 11 years. And one of the women said, we have a hard time asking for help. And I said, well, yes, this is true, but why is that? And my other friend said, it's because we have walls. And I had that same reaction. Well, what do you mean walls? We're doing life together. And so we went on this journey. We met once a month for a whole year. And we said, okay, if we have these walls, what are they? Are they walls with God? Do we have walls with each other? And if we have them, how do we break them down so that we can more reflect like Christ? So the book grew out of, uh, it grew out of a group. It did, yes. I started journaling, doing lesson plans, and at the end of all of that, I really felt God prompting my heart to write a book. And, mm -hmm. of course, with my Italian heritage, I argued, pushed mm -hmm. back, and said, no, girl, you got the wrong girl, God. And he was patient with me and the book came to life. And I love the name of your groups called the Jericho Girls. Yes. So, because that's, and uh, walls are replete throughout the scripture. Yes, for sure. Uh, Old and New Testament and significant. Absolutely, significant, yeah. especially the story of Joshua and the Israelites marching around the walls of Jericho mm -hmm. and those walls came crashing down and that's how we became known as the Jericho Girls. Now your husband, David, he's in the studio with us, he is, is a builder. Yes. Now, did he teach you anything about walls? I know there's different kinds of walls, and did oh, you yes. get little illustrations and things from him? Yes, I really drew from his experience in building, and so he talked to me about structural walls and firewalls and non-bearing walls, and so I said, okay, that's very similar. There's a really good analogy there of the walls we put up around our hearts in an attempt to protect them. And so those structural walls, those healthy walls, we want in place, yeah. but the other walls that are not good for our spirits, we want those to come down. And he's probably had to knock down a few bad walls yes. in his, in his <laughs> career. <laughs> okay, you mentioned the first wall of shame. Mm -hmm. That would be a tough one to me. Shame is a very difficult wall because we all want to be loved. And if we dare to share any stories or relate, one of the things we need to do is relate to each other. And if we can't relate, we get stuck behind that wall of shame. And it's very lonely there. But there are so many others out there who have very similar experiences. And what they do is they need to relate to others and see that they're not alone in the process because loneliness can draw you into a pit of despair. So you want to bring down that wall of shame and reveal your heart in a new way to trusted Yeah, I, uh, I've i been really in the ministry all my life. My mm -hmm. dad and grandfather was also a preacher, but um, I think now people do a better job with that yes. one. 
Yes, and it is very generational because I came from a family where you don't discuss. Oh, you wouldn't say the word exactly, pregnant. Exactly, <laughs> right? <laughs> it was. It stayed within the family, oh, I and how so they whispered a little. Yes. <laughs> so they're doing better on that one. They are doing better, but still, there's a lot of pretenses there because the world teaches us that if we are vulnerable, we appear weak, and that's what they teach us. But that's not what Christ told us to, to be like. He teaches us to be strong, confrontational yeah. in truth, love, and grace. And if you're inwardly ashamed, right, that's a huge barrier that the Lord would like to bring that down. Because the, um, the old hymn, Ill Rugged Cross, yes. is shame and reproach. Mm, that is so true. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, you have a wall of fear, which I say, who doesn't have fear? Babies are born with, you know, fear of being dropped or whatever. But Jesus came to knock that one down, didn't he? For sure, because we were not designed to have fear. Originally, back in the garden, yeah, it was a place of joy and relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And once sin occurred, everything changed. It went to a place of hiding and fear from God. And so this is the first place that we start in our book is a wall with God. What are we shameful of? What are we fearful of? And how do we bring that down so our, first our relationship is restored with Him? So we can relate with Him better and then um, be restored for sure. He was always saying, Old and New Testament, fear not. Mm. Fear not. So fear much. Not. Yes. Both Old and test New Testament. But it's getting worse mm -hmm. in our uh, present situation. I know where I live, everybody's got a security system. Oh, for sure. You know, all the signs out there, uh, don't rob this place because, <laughs> you know, the bells and whistles will go off. For sure. And uh, you can take that to anything. Um, nothing is safe anymore. Mm -hmm. Your bank account isn't safe. Nothing is safe. Yes. And in the middle of that, Jesus says, fear not. Fear not. We have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and who is our security system. The alarm might go off in the mm -hmm. house, but he is the one who protects. And so we really need to lean into mm -hmm. that more and, and just draw from his, his peace and protection. In your Jericho Girls group, uh, is there anyone who stands out in that group that was kind of set free from this? Because there's a lot of really fearful women. Yes, yes. We're all men and women. Mm -hmm. We all have fears. Mm -hmm. And men and women can relate to my book that we all have fears that we need to conquer mm -hmm. because God does want to set us free from that. Mm -hmm. I would say, first of all, Arthelene, it was me. Mm -hmm. I emerged a warrior, somebody who was strong and courageous. My heart was restored writing this book. I will now fight for my marriage. I will lay down lies. I will fight for my relationship with God. I will do things that I wasn't sure I was capable of before. But I will share a story about one gal who was in our group and I really had to ask her, please come, please come. And God spoke to her heart and she did come, but she was done with relationship. She had been hurt so many times. She did not want to be in relationship anymore. Mm -hmm. The first six months, she hardly said a word, and today she is a completely restored person. She is in relationship with us. Uh, her relationship has just blossomed with God. Mm -hmm. It's just been beautiful to watch. I'm telling you, friends, this is some very valuable information, and you, if you have you know, a study group or anything in your home, this is uh, great. We're going to put the website up for this. You can go there uh, to get the book. The name is uh, Walls of a Warrior. And it's by my guest, uh, Donna Hetzler. Also, uh, you did a book signing at Barnes & Noble. Was it Barnes & Noble? It was, it Barnes & Noble. Very, very well. Yes, it went very good. March 1st, we launched the book. And God has just taken it in a whole different direction. I'm, I'm surprised by a few things. One is that he's using it as a Bible study. Mm -hmm. And nationwide, we are seeing groups of women come together saying, I want to be a Jericho girl mm -hmm. and I want to conquer my knock fears. <laughs> That's right. We're going to knock down those barriers, bring down mm -hmm. those walls, and we're going to be in relationship together. The other thing that surprised me is I've had male readers and mm -hmm. this book is geared towards women, but the men who have read it and reviewed it have said, I can relate to this. Jericho guys. Yes, we might have to start a new, <laughs> a new group of Jericho yeah. guys, but they said I can relate. I also got a better insight to the women's psyche and how I can better support my spouse or my mm -hmm. sister mom. How did this uh, change your marriage oh. when, when you kind of got rid of a lot of baggage? 
it definitely changed my relationship with David. We've always had a very strong marriage, but um, through this process, I've revealed parts of my heart that I didn't know needed to be revealed, even more, more transparency with him, and being more confrontational, being able to say, hey, I did not like this, mm -hmm. or that didn't work for me, and as where years passed, I might have just been the little girl in the corner hiding mm -hmm. and hurt mm -hmm. by his comments and what have you, and so I'm able to con confront in truth, love, and grace, and you do connect in a deeper level makes once it those- it healthier. It does, it makes it yeah. much healthier once those walls come down and you're able to say what you feel and you have those boundaries and things in yeah. place. Now you have walls of others, that one's tricky. Oh, very tricky. There are some people in your life that they're gonna be there forever. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. And they can irritate you and rub you the wrong way. Tell us what to do with them. <laughs> Well, I think the main thing for me is having boundaries in place. And I did not do that with certain people in my family for many years. And so what I had to do is lovingly say, I love you guys, but this isn't working for me. This isn't healthy for me. Mm -hmm. And that confrontation was very difficult to bring about. But mm -hmm. through a lot of prayer, God said, you can do this. You're a warrior. You're strong. And so I did, and it changed the relationship for the better. Mm -hmm. So many times we're afraid of change. Mm -hmm. What is this going to look like? Or am well, I going to so hurt somebody? We're going to hurt somebody's feelings. Yes, for sure. Because all of America is running on feelings today. Oh, I, yes. I, it, when a politician asks somebody, well, how did you feel about that? Who cares? Right. Uh, what's right and wrong? Exactly. And that's, that's what you do. And I think a lot of that schmaltzy stuff is coming to the church. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's weakening. It's very weakening where... It is. Bible says, speak the truth in love, and it's, it is possible to do that. It is absolutely, mm -hmm. Arthelene, possible to do that, and that's what I talk about in my book, is being able to model Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't he do any, yeah, he confronted, but it was in a very loving mm -hmm. and... Except when he picked up the whip. That yes. Was, <laughs> sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes too. you do have to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, you say most women cannot identify mm -hmm. who they are, and so how do most of them answer the question that you put to them, who am I? That is such a huge chapter. I have a whole chapter on who am I mm -hmm. because our identity is so important. Mm -hmm. And being a homekeeper, I think, is one of the most arduous jobs. And we lose sight of that. And it's being, a wonderful identification. It is. Being a mother mm -hmm. or a wife or any of those things that God puts into your life, it's a great mm -hmm. identity. Mm -hmm. But we tend to get wrapped up in that and we lose our identity of who we really are. What makes us tick? And so in doing so, we need to find out who we are. Spend some time camping on what is it that you really love to do. And as we've talked about, mm -hmm. my passion is connecting women and others in healthy relationships, restoring their relationship with God and with others, and to rise up mm -hmm. as mighty warriors ready to fight and to, to fight for your marriages and to be that strong person conquering our fears and just living in a reflection of Jesus. How many of those uh, Jericho girls could never really coherently answer that question? Most of them. Really? Yes. It was very astounding to me that we get so caught up in our doing mm -hmm. versus who we really are mm -hmm. that they couldn't put their finger on it. And my one friend said to me, she said, you know, I used to be this person and I don't even know her anymore. All I am is mom, I'm wife, and I go to work and, and all those things make up who I am. I don't even know, where's that strong person I was mm -hmm. when I first got into this marriage? Where'd she go? And I said, she's still there. Mm -hmm. You just have to identify that God made you this strong person and then live it out. Get it back, girl. Uh, how long have you been doing this, uh, with, say, with the Jericho girls? We've been going for almost three years now, and we're still going. We and still meet. And you have meet. some uh, rather significant testimonies. Oh, I'm my sure. goodness, we do. In fact, there's a big church in Parker that there was 50 women who showed up over the summer to use my book as a study, and all of them were saying, I want to conquer my fears. I want to be this new person. I want to be a warrior, a woman of valor. And so I went to the very first meeting, and it was interesting to see what they had to say about themselves, their countenance. Mm -hmm. And at the very end of the meeting, the leader who led that, that particular Jericho Girls group had said, I want you to do one thing. 
where were you when you started and where were you when you finished? Mm -hmm. And they had words and they were, you know, insecure. Now I've got self-esteem. I was a mm -hmm. non-believer and now I believe. I mean, that's oh, those huge, are, huge statements. Those are, those are really good. Mm -hmm. There's one area, um, a term you used, um, a person's self-esteem. I don't like that term. Because the Bible says we're to esteem the name of the Lord. For sure. So I think it's, I think, I know what it means. Mm -hmm. It means a, a sense of self, self-worth yes. and all. Um, but the world has taken that to mm. the most ridiculous ends. Yes. Um, I know they've spent millions of dollars in the public schools to teach the children self-esteem, thinking if they felt good about themselves, they'd get a good grade. No, you have to study to get a good grade. It doesn't matter what you think of yourself right but the whole concept I, I totally understand mm -hmm. and Jesus really came to lift us up yes and uh, our whatever identity term you, whatever term you use our identity is in Christ and knowing who we are mm -hmm. in Christ and having that esteem from him it's not about being pompous saying I'm so much better than you and that's where we go awry is we compare it's, yeah, it's where you can hold your head up right and, where you can hold your head up in Christ and say mm -hmm. I am the daughter of the king mm -hmm. and Absolutely. I love this about me because God gave this mm -hmm. to me it's no better mm -hmm. than you mm -hmm. it's what he gave me and that's how we are supposed to esteem ourselves. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're almost out of time, but in, in a few seconds, can you describe healthy walls you talked yes. about? Yes. Well, I talked a little bit about boundaries and mm -hmm. how important those boundaries mm -hmm. are, getting those in place. Self-love, loving yourself in a healthy way, not mm -hmm. of the world, mm -hmm. but that you're acknowledging. But people who hate themselves are yes. really in trouble. Oh, for sure. And we need to really focus on those good things, those gifts that God mm -hmm. gave us. He made us all uniquely beautiful. And so having the self, uh, correct self-talk is very important. How and do you those, describe that? You know, so many times we talk down about ourselves or, you know, if you were to give Certainly me... Certainly inwardly. Yes. Or if you were to give me a compliment, I'd go, oh, no, yeah. no. That, rather than <laughs> this saying... This thing? Yes, this little old <laughs> thing who me. Rather than taking it in grace and saying, thank you. That mm -hmm. is something that God gave me. So the, the correct self-talk and not putting yourself down. And those are healthy balls. The others yes. are... Um, oh, there, there, there is a good term for them. Uh, you know, just ends up just putting yourself down all the time and for sure doesn't help things we are out of time don mm. thank you so Donna. thank you for having me i have me. a sister named dawn she yes. spells it d-a-w-n-a -A. beautiful so close i like that, <laughs> I like that. yes but uh, we thank you for being here i hope you'll check the book out and i do hope you'll join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper god bless you Very if you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.